VMware was definitely announcing and talking about Gen AI. There was a considerable push to get generative AI, both sort of directional content and pragmatic content, even things like training people to do generative AI in their daily business and just use ChatGPT better, right? I mean, and we're, it's funny because we're doing the rack ends sponsoring uh, VMware user groups or VMUGs, um, and our presentations are going to be very similar using generative AI to improve your, your DevOps practices. Welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us once again, Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder at Reckend, right from, uh, back from VMware Explorer. Uh, unfortunately, I could not attend uh, event this year due to another conflict, but you were there. And we used to sit down at the events, do the whole wrap up, you know, and talk about the whole event. So this time I'm going to like, you're going to become my eyes and tell me what the event was like. Uh, so, so before we get into some major announcements, some major, you know, kind of uh, discussions. Uh, let's just talk about how was the event because you have been attending it for a very long time also and you are very uh, core part of the eco, uh, VMware ecosystem as well. So for you, how was the event like? It was a solid event. Um, I think we're, you know, the VMware does a good job putting on the show and, and you know, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of um, uh, sessions and things like that where they're really providing very solid you know, education for people. Um, one of the things I, I felt about this show is it just felt like it was more VMware practitioners. Um, it wasn't as big, definitely was not as big as past shows. Uh, uh, and it, it had a, it had a good energy, but it didn't have sort of a, you know, overwhelming enthusiasm. It, it definitely didn't have a, you know, everybody looking downcast and, and, and sad either. So, you know, it was a, it was a good solid show for VMware. Um, Maybe not, you know, but if you're used to VM worlds in the past, before they changed the name, um, you know, there was there was a lot of activities in and around the show. And, and it, it, this didn't have quite that same level of energy. When you're talking to people, what kind of discussions you are hearing? It could be the positive, negative, whatever it was. But what was the yeah. I, I don't want to talk about the official uh, VMware, but I'm, <laughs> I, I want to hear more you about want, what you're you hearing. Want the hall, you want the hallway track pieces. Mm -hmm. The hallway track on on this is that the Broadcom um, the lack of resolution on the Broadcom acquisition is definitely causing a lot of um, uncertainty. And, and that's one of the challenges with, a sh with any of these shows is, you know, every, every presentation starts with a, you know, a, a warning about, about uncertainty and, and things like that. And it, it's very hard for VMware to have a really concrete direction when Broadcom is standing in the future. And, and it's, it's a two-sided problem here. And it does show up in the show a bit, right? Everything that VMware's positioning as forward messaging is filtered through the, you know, maybe, or we think so. There's a lot of concerns in the hallway tracks around, you know, what, what Broadcom cuts, right? And people don't know how deep it's gonna go. It's, you know, it could be, and I've heard rumors all the way down from the whole, um, Tanzu Kubernetes application stuff gets pushed out in favor of virtualization. Um, I don't have any concrete information on that, but you know that's that's you know a popular assessment. Um, to VMware, you know, raises Broadcom raises the prices a whole bunch, and people go fleeing for alternatives. And so I think what you see in a show like this, when that type of uncertainty is, people want to know about the basics, about what they're using. And they're, uh, they're more skeptical about whether or not VMware can deliver on the innovation side of these curves. And, and that's sort of what I saw walking around the show floor is the show floor was dominated by the, the basics that you need to run VMware and VMware infrastructure, which is still the market leader, uh, hands down. And so there's a lot of hardware vendors. There's a lot of um, consulting people. There's backup. There's recovery. There's printing. Right. There's there's those types of things. But you didn't see a lot of the um, DevOps innovation pieces around it. You didn't see a Kubernetes community pieces around what's going on. Um, and so that's you know that's sort of an interesting challenge. From, from VMware and, and the fact that it's taken so long for the Broadcom pieces to come about. Um, and that, that's the hallway track. It's like, when's it gonna close? What's gonna get dropped? Um, you know, how much is the price gonna increase? Uh, 
Um, there, there unfortunately isn't an expectation that Broadcom's going to drop a lot of investment in innovation around VMware. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen anybody turn around and, and expect Broadcom to be uh, investing in on, on on new technologies out of VMware. Sadly, because that's it's a, it's actually a very very good team, and and. It's worth noting there are some really interesting things. We should get to that. Some interesting things that VMware is doing that I think have real enterprise value. A few days ago, the UK already cleared the acquisition, so it may close in October or whenever the expected date is. And uh, Broadcom also announced an investment of two billion dollars in innovation at okay. VMware. If you look at the Broadcom's investment and uh, some of these, you know, core technologies, open source technologies that uh, VMware is working on, did you hear anything about that? And this is a place where I think, you know, the hallway and the punditry is is very different than what VMware is messaging. Because I have a lot of friends at VMware and the people in the Tanzu group are very bullish about Tanzu's opportunity in the market. And and as you know, somebody who works in enterprise, I also see a high desire for enterprise grade Kubernetes that runs, you know, that companies run themselves, that runs on premises in a self-managed way. Um, and this is the thing I found very interesting, right? VMware's done a lot of multi-cloud and hybrid cloud discussion, and they, they, they keep talking about, about that. One of the things they've done very effectively here is they've made it possible for people to consume Kubernetes in their own cloud infrastructure, and that's really, or in their own private cloud infrastructure. And then they're working towards edge, they're working towards other, other places, and that work is very important to enterprises, and and one of the things I, I think that Broadcom could be doing and, and VMware is definitely moving towards is this idea of we're making stuff that you can run yourself. And and that was fascinating. I say that, you know, with the, the Tansu filter, the thing I found fascinating was some of the AI work they're doing, where they are investing in using the open models like Hugging Face to then do training on internal data. And there is, without a doubt, uh, VMware is aware of this and they're moving towards this. I think it's a great opportunity from a Broadcom perspective of saying, I need to do training on my own data, behind my own firewall, in my own protected ways. And, and that is actually a significant opportunity and was definitely part of VMware's messaging here. And, and this is the place where I think things get a little funny. There's a lot of people who are very much like the cloud is going to win and, and all that. But Enterprises that we talk to actually are very concerned about privacy and costs and maintaining, you know, control of their infrastructure. And we definitely see uh, VMware's talking the right language uh, for those customers, Un undoubtedly. The, the, if they can clear the air by getting the Broadcom done, right, and then, you know, messaging very clear on where Broadcom's making investments, I there's a lot of great tech. Um, and VMware you know, stuck to their knitting and talked about this great tech that they're doing and how to use it and, and deliver it. Uh, and that, that, that's exactly what they should be doing, frankly. And since you mentioned, uh, you know, Gen AI, of course, Broadcom, you know, they, they, they are doing a lot of work there. And of course, we're, uh, talk about how much discussion you saw there were any both with any generative AI technologies or any discussions or any mm -hmm. announcements that you saw from VMware? VMware was definitely announcing and talking about Gen AI. Um, there was a considerable push to get generative AI, um, both sort of directional content and pragmatic content, even things like training people to do uh, generative AI in their daily business and just use ChatGPT better, right? I mean, and we're, it's funny because we're doing the rack ends sponsoring uh, VMware user groups or VMUGs, um, and our presentations are going to be very similar using generative AI to improve your, your DevOps practices. Um, and that was that was this, VMware was doing the same thing and working towards that process. Um, but there was, you know, as, as much as in the past we've seen shows pivot, um, there was a significant amount of content around the generative AI pieces. There wasn't as much in the booths. And I think that some of that is that it's been it's harder for companies marketing to position into what generative AI is using. And it's also harder for companies to actually have material products, it's still relatively new. Um, you know, hats off to VMware. They, they showed some very 
I, I don't know how soon this gets into product, but they showed some very good um, integrated um, assistant. So you could you could have a you know a, a, a VMware chatbot that would actually help you do things in VMware. And I saw a couple of demos where they're using AI to re identify problems or reinforce issues. So that type of of um, integrated work with AI is very powerful for the VMware user base, right? It, it means that they can do more effectively on their own premises work. Um, and those are, those I, I, you know, you get, you, you definitely feel people get more excited when they're like, oh, wait a second, you're gonna help me diagnose problems faster. You're gonna help me identify problems before I do upgrades. Um, those are very, very potent uses uh, of AI. And it's exactly what VMware was showing. So hats off to them. Um, for for focusing on on very pragmatic use cases for this technology. When you were at the event and you saw, uh, you know, the, the attendance, you saw announcement, you saw you know some uncertainty on Broadcom. Uh, what does it mean for REC? And and I'll go back to the the point that you and I always discuss is the the the, the, the folks that we are serving the customer. What does it mean for customers also? And uh, what does it mean for Rackend to continue to serve its uh, VMware customers? And it's worth noting um, that Rackend, we're a software product that companies, our enterprise customers and hosting companies, uh, customers use to deploy VMware and other things. Um, and, and our customers uh, deploy VMware uh, hundreds of thousands of times a year um, in a fully automated way. So, so we're very invested in the tools and the components that go into building infrastructure from the bare metal up around VMware. Um, and and so the thing that's interesting to me is um, you know there's a lot of value in helping companies do that, especially in edge. And I, I keep waiting and watching for the edge infrastructure side of these conversations um, to really come about. Edge was not as dominant in this year's show as it has been in the past. Um, but when, when Rackn looks at it, you know, we get very excited when um, customers start moving towards more infrastructure as code and DevOps processes, which VMware is pushing very aggressively, um, and then look for ways in which they can do that at the cluster build or the edge build site. Um, and those conversations are still not really part of the VMware Explorer conversation. Um, VMware Explorer is much more about how do I use VMware? Um, and, and most people aren't talking in the show about how they install, condition, build an environment around and things like that. There, there isn't actually a show for that. And so um, we, we do definitely go and talk to customers at that show and prospects at that show and partners at that show who are, who are very in invested in improving that out-of-the-box experience because the ROI for VMware um, actually can be really extended uh, the more dynamic you make the whole infrastructure. So it's been exciting for that. We keep, we keep looking for the... Um, the place where we can talk about how fun and fast we've made VMware installs. Um, and we're happy to do that one-on-one -on -one with customers, but uh, the show is not the place for that. Rob, thank you so much for uh, taking me to the conference. Uh, thanks for sharing all those, you know, of course, great insights, the discussions that you heard there. And most importantly, I mean, as you also said, and uh, we'll see how things will look like after October. Um, uh, there is no need to get either super excited or panic. <laughs> we, we have had a lot of experience with you know getting excited or getting you know worried, but uh, we'll see uh, how things shape up. But thanks for all those you know sharing uh, your experience there, and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you.